Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our Crossy Road series which we're making on Python. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched parts 1 and 2, please watch them before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense, you need to have watched the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 and 2, in which case let's continue with our code. So now you can scroll down below and create a new class called screen and once again we will be um, inheriting from the um, sprite module. And this um, particular sprite is going to make it extremely easy for us to keep changing our backgrounds and it just makes things so much simpler, uh, which you'll see later on. So after you've done with the inets, what you can do is set up three different images. The first image is going to be the main scene or the main game. The second one is going to be the you win end screen and the third one is going to be the you lose end screen. I'm going to resize all of these things to be the width and height. So the image at the start is obviously going to be um, image one, which is the main background or the main scene. And after we've set this to be the image, or after we set the image to be this, um, we can set self.x and self.y to be zero because we want the background to start at the top left of the screen. Um, I'll get a rectangle from the image so that we can move um, the sprite around. And within our main update method, I'm just going to have one line of code and that is for the top left of our rectangle to simply be um, self.x and self.y. So now you can scroll down and create an object of the screen class. I'm going to call it BG standing for background and I'll also be creating a screen group and then adding BG to the screen group. Um, now you can scroll down to your uh, main um, to your uh, main loop and here you can replace the win.fill with a simple um, uh, with a simple screen group dot draw followed by a win in the parameter and you can also add in uh, an update because we obviously need the screen group to be updating all the time. So if you've done that you can save your code and then you can click on the run key and as you can see our program looks way 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 better already. So now you can create a new class called flag and once again we'll be importing from the p.sprite.sprite class. And um, we'll be having, after you've done with the two inits, um, we'll be uh, having an additional uh, argument here called number. Um, but unlike the car class, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an attribute um, called self.number, which is equal to the number. This is going to help us later on, but as of now, just follow me. So number one is going to correspond to the green flag and number two is going to correspond to the white flag. Now I'll be using number two and an else, but you get the point. So in case the number is one, I'll be um, going to X about 50, which is the left of the screen. I'll be uh, loading in the image as the green flag. And I will also set self dot visible to be false because the, the green flag is going to be hidden um, until the white flag is touched. I'll be doing pretty much the opposite things in the white flag. Um, but one thing I'll be changing is the X position and I'll make it go to about 580, which is pretty much the opposite end of the screen. Now I'm going to set the Y value to be um, height by two because I want the flags to be on the center of the screen as well. Um, now I'm not really going to use the width and height of the sprite. So all I'm going to do is just say scale 2x, which means double the existing width and height. And after this, I will get a rectangle from the image so that I can move it around. So within the update method, I'll be first checking if the sprite is visible and that is done using the boolean self dot visible variable. And if it is visible, then I will set my um, sprite center to be self dot x and self dot y. So I'm not really going to get into the flag objects and making them appear in this video because they are a bit complicated and will take quite a bit of time. So instead what I'll be doing is I'll be making sure that you guys can view the score on the screen at the end of this video. So now I can scroll down and set up a variable called score to be zero 
and you can also get a font because we will need a font while blitting something on the screen. Um, I'm gonna call it score font and the font that I'll be using is Comic Sans. I'm going to set the size of the font to be 80 and I'm also going to set the bold value to be true so that our font is nice and bold. Um, now I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna create a function called score display and this is going to pretty much display the score. So I'll be having a local variable called store text, which is going to constantly, you know, keep updating um, the text of the score. And here I'll be setting that to be the rendering of the font. And I'll be setting the string value of it to be the string of score plus um, uh, divided by five so that the user understands that he is in, you know, level one or level two of um, the five total levels. Um, I'm also going to set the anti-alias to be true and I'm not entirely sure what this does. I'm um, just set it to be true because it really doesn't matter. The last thing we need to set up is the color and I'm going to do it in a black color. So um, the, um, the RGB value is going to be 0, 0, 0. And after you're done with this, you can just blit the score on the X and Y position. Lastly, you can just call in this score display function in your main loop and that will ensure that the score is displayed properly. And when you run the code, you should see that your program looks quite good now. And there are obviously still a few more things that we need to do. But overall, we are headed in the right direction. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.